And what was the significance of getting those two early converted tries? How much did they uh, take the pressure to some extent off uh, the rest of the game? I don't know. I think probably adds the pressure because when you've got a lead, you don't want to lose it. Um, and that was the that was uh, probably at the forethought that we had to keep going. I think sometimes there's a, a a point where you can sit on the lead, and I think we were conscious not to do that. Um, you know, we probably went a bit um, attritional um, after the first 25. Um, but like I say, we, we stuck to our process and kept the ball. And Gats alluded to a couple of opportunities. Pretty disappointed to take. Um, you know, the second half we moved the scoreboard on and got those opportunities like we say so you know it's a dangerous place to be when you've got that lead you can go backwards but it's pleasing that we were able to build on it and uh, as as good as a result as you could have hoped for as you had up to uh, them for round two yeah, I think um, everybody wants to start with the W. We've got that. I think um, yeah, I was asked a question uh, over there whether it was complete. Not by any stretch. Um, and I think it's the end of the start for us. I think it's the first 80 out of the way and we've got a, another big week coming up um, and a tough trip to Twickenham. Warren, your thoughts on that trip next week? Yeah, no, I think uh, I've said uh, a few weeks ago I thought the draw was... <coughs> A great draw for us in, in the Six Nations. Um, you know, we've, we've got England and Ireland away, and and often in the, the Six Nations, you know, my time, well, we've had pretty tough opening encounters and opening weekends. So, um, getting Scotland um, first up at home was was a great it was great for us to get an opportunity to to get off to a winning start. And obviously, there were a lot of pl- players that were involved last week and last year. Um, you know, they wanted to make up for that disappointment, uh, having been the, the first time that uh, Wales had lost to Scotland for a long time. So, uh, look, we're, we're, we're pleased to get that, that off to, you know, a bonus point win here in the Championship. Uh, we go to next week and, and to a venue that we've had um, a lot of success uh, in the last 10 years, you know, and, and played well there. So, um, looking forward to it. Lee Hoff when he came into the game, his position that scrutiny, was that as good a performance as you've seen from him? Yeah, look, he's, we've been working with with Lee in terms of staying square and um, he's been working hard on his footwork and and that, staying a bit more upright, he tended to get a little bit uh, low in his his carries and so there's been lots of work on that and not just his attacking stuff. uh, the way that uh, I think he goal kicked, and we we, we changed defensively as our, our, our set up a little bit in structure, and we'll keep working with with that and and, and, and doing that. But that yeah, was a, you know definitely a, a confidence building performance by him. Would you expect him to now straight for straight through the situation? Look, I, I think the thing is that there is no doubt that I, I, I to me he's the best defensive fullback in the world. His positional play at fullback and. The way he does things, you know, he, and his work rate is is absolutely phenomenal. When you see the, the numbers that after a game and how hard he's worked, and compared to anyone else, and the amount of meterage he's, he's covered, um, and so it's pleasing to see him, you know, get some confidence from an attacking attacking perspective, and and then to to also finish up with a with a fantastic goal kicking display. What well, was that one more satisfying in terms of the players in this thing? Shows the strength you can That's what we've been talking about, and, that, and I think that we never spoke at all about, uh, hadn't spoken about the injuries uh, and the players being unavailable. But I kind of I said to the players that you know there, there is no excuses this week, and the players who are coming in, yes, there's some experienced players, but the players who are coming in, um, they all believe in their own ability, and a lot of those players think that they're you know better than the players that are. Uh, not been involved. So if you go, if you went through and you said, um, you know, Jake, we lost Jake Ball. Corey Hill's been the most improved, one of the most improved players in Wales in the couple of years. You've got Moriarty coming in for Falatau. Navidi was outstanding um, in the in the autumn, and you know, there's a lot of competition in that position. Gareth Davies for Maurice Webb. Jonathan Davies out, but Scott Williams in the midfield, um, and the and the two wingers have been playing with a lot of confidence as well. So. Um, I thought the guys coming in, um, you know, I, f- I felt uh, and looked like I said the way they prepared and was brilliant. And and the, and the our focus has definitely been on, you know, developing that depth for 2019. All of the points came from Scarlet's players today. Their, their regional form is that? Do you see that transfer now? Um, I think that the biggest thing about this is that, is 
what's been hard sort of coming into these campaigns is that uh, probably the last six years we haven't had a team involved in quarterfinals of Europe and you get a group of players come in and with sort of that confidence and self-belief in their own ability and that makes a, a huge difference to us as a squad because you know players are, you know in a good frame of mind and we've and that's been hard at times where you've sort of had to put regional form to one side and then just concentrate on on, the, on your national setup so having that group of players come in and uh, having performed you know well in the last um, 80 months or so has been you know it's definitely a positive for the squad George North played last night he's obviously a game coach out are any other players going to be the next equation availability wise um, Liam Williams, I think, is going to take a full part in training on Monday. Um, and George, um, I think uh, Fellatel is not too far away, but he's going to need a game, obviously. Um, but th- those two, um, you know, come, in, come into contention. And I don't, we're just m- monitoring um, Dan Berger as well. He's making good progress, but he's, he's, not, he's not going to be fit for next week, I don't think. Alan's right, he's fit, yeah, so um, yeah, it's going to be you know, some tough decisions and um, and uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be in the, having that competition within the squad and and having some quality players know that they're having to fight really hard for their position. Brilliant, all done. Thank you very much.